Oh. You guys, check this out. If there's any Airstream in the world that I would give up the Doxy bus for, it might be the Glove Trotter. We're gonna walk you through. So the Globe Trotter is somewhere between the International and the Classic on the tier. This is their first 30-foot Globe Trotter ever. So Globe Trotter label. So some things that we noticed right away. Electric awning. And we've got electric stabilizers down here. And uh, the controls for the electric stabilizer are right over here behind this little door. So that's how you extend the awning and the stabilizers. You notice that um, it's very, very similar to uh, the International. It has mostly plastic finishes, though you can upgrade this stuff. So on the Classic, um, you'll get all stainless steel. So um, otherwise you got the same, uh, same rims. But then we noticed right away that, um, so apparently on the, uh, on the Twin, you get two extra hatches. So check this out. So one hatch here. And then you have your regular hatch, just like we have. Oh yeah, look, they changed the bumper to be black, black accents instead of gray. I like it because it does better contrast. And Interesting too, it is a smaller hatch though than mine. That's interesting. So you've got your black bumper. They've put um, plastic covers on these. Interesting. So the awning kit is the same that I have on the Serenity. And got another hatch here, Hatch O Rama. Not sure how I feel about that, but. Um, I am always complaining about lack of hatch space, but. So, 50 amp short cable, power and backwash, exterior shower, just like on the International, um, cable TV slash antenna hookup, and uh, this is uh, hot water, and then another front hatch, just like we have on the Serenity. And Fred noticed something about these windows is a little bit different. Um, there's three of them, right? Instead of two, like we'd have on a Doxy bus. So my speculation is maybe, maybe uh, people thought it was hard to lift the bigger windows. I don't know. I'd have to think about that one, but. Same embellishments on the front, but I did notice they've changed um, the paint to black. I'm, I wonder if it's uh, more durable, I don't know. But um, they still got those same breakaways, same um, seven blade connector, same chains. Check this out though. They did um, change the hitch here. So now it's kind of a little rubber kind of strap type deal. So that's interesting. A little bit different. Looks otherwise, looks the same to me. So here we have apparently the generation of stair that was released right, right after I bought um, the International Serenity. But um, you can see here it's all aluminum instead of that big honk and steel thing that I have. And uh, I really like it. I like the texturing on it. No slip. You guys want to see inside? I'm excited. Oh, look at this, you guys. Oh. Okay, so first thing I noticed right away. So the Globetrotter and the International Serenity, the Doxy bus, share many similarities, but... I noticed a couple of immediate differences just because I've been in my Airstream for so long. Check out these really sick controls. I think this is really nice. This is a nice embellishment, kind of the, um, the nice chrome. I noticed that uh, in typical Airstream style though, you and I talk about usability all the time. Um, no labels, <laughs> so you just have to know. <laughs> but then they label these, right? Yeah. So also I notice immediately uh, in the international garbage is here, um, here, you go in through the side. So I wonder why they did that. Hard to know. Interesting. 
they've also got kind of a walnut finish here. Not my style, but um, they've got um, storage down along the floor here. So, um, looks like an inverted circuit down there. Pretty good access to the inverted circuits all the way along. Um, little thumper down there. We were not able to find out what the make was of the stereo, but now another interesting change they've made here is the speakers point out. Um, in our Airstream, the speakers are down here. We have noticed that is um, a bit of a problem because when you're sitting down, then the speakers are really loud, and um, then when you're standing up, you can't hear anything. So uh, interesting design choice. Um, so I noticed, uh, look at this, they, there's no back storage now. They finally got rid of that to make more room for the couch. I was wondering why there was a few inches more storage up here. So fascinating. And then they have um, the standard smoke alarm that everybody turns off because you can't cook. And hold, check out. This is like watching an Autobot unfold. Look at the mechanism on this thing. I mean, this is, this is crazy. Look at this, like, thing go. So, Fred and I were talking about this. We've noticed that um, in some of these hatches, they have um, mounted mirrors, because I like to look at my nails. No, I'm kidding. Um, I don't know. I assume it's because people want to see stuff laying down there, whatever. Um, and here's another one. So, it looks to me like DVD player, and then... Um, Fusion, I don't know uh, what this uh, what this brand is. I don't know much about it, but it looks like it does have Sirius XM built in, so that's kind of cool. Um, looking to see, I don't see a wireless mic like we have in the Doxy bus, but so we have the same LED lighting. We have the same vent system, so there's a plenum up in here. You can see that there's walnut embellishments around the edges of this thing. Um, now, this is something I've noticed about the Airstreams, um, typically on the lot. They typically order up the ones that are super open and white like this. But um, you can see just um, in two days that this Airstream has been on the lot, you can see it's already getting dirty. So, um, you know, if I was to order up this Airstream, it would probably be the other way around. I would go for the, um, the dark couch and then uh, the lighter colored embellishments probably. But... Um, so Fred, uh, you say um, in our Airstream, this is actually a kitchen where you have two seats facing each other and then the kitchen table. What they've done here is they've laid it out along the length of the trailer. We think it's to make it look more open, maybe, possibly. Yeah. But you said you like it more, huh? Well, just because it feels more open. Whether it's more convenient or not, I do not. Right. So my question is... When you're sitting here, can you work a full day, eight hours, like this? I think the answer probably would be yes. I could get used to anything, but what I really like about the um, the kitchen uh, in the International Serenity is I can hide a bunch of sins like power cables and chargers and things oh, I'm down underneath uh, the seats. So maybe I'd have to fuss around a little bit with the storage solution here. So. Um, I presume that these little buttons release the table so you can take it out. Now that's cool, right? If you wanted to, like, uh, have some guests, um, you could probably pop that out. So, uh, in typical Airstream style, I notice that there's no sense to where anything is. So, for some reason, um, in the living room here, they've, they've got the tank monitor. So, like, uh, typical Airstream silliness continues. Mm -hmm. uh, it does appear to have built-in solar, which is pretty cool. I don't know uh, what the wattage is. So, um, moving on, they have uh, built-in USB chargers everywhere. That's pretty cool. They have the similar walnut embellished, um, like, covers with the same Autobot style hinges. And the lights turn on automatically when you open them. I did not notice that. You're right. Sure enough. So... My only concern as I sit here and think about this, as I ponder um, what they've done, is uh, Fred and I are talking about that this is a pure white. You notice already with just a few people with their mitts on it, like us, you can see it's already getting pretty gross. 
probably if I bought this Airstream, if I couldn't get this in a darker color, I would probably put some kind of a, um, Bulldog could probably put some vinyl yeah. on there, right? So, but uh, this counter, you have to admit, is gorgeous. It's a uh, Corian. They did away with that little round portal thing that's in the Airstream, uh, the International Serenity, give you this uh, double, double deal. And um, I don't know if this is a growy faucet, it sure looks growy-ish. Then we decided this was, did we decide this was a um, trash? Mm -hmm. I think that's freaking brilliant, man. That's, that's freaking brilliant. Oh, you can see guts of the Airstream though. If you want to show our viewers. Maybe most people aren't like me and they don't look down into their, mm -hmm. the heart of their Airstream, but. So, uh, lighting controls. So, this is fascinating. I'd, I'd have to think about this. We go through so much embarrassingly large amounts of trash. Uh, I don't know. I really like the controls on the hood. Very, very well done. Look at this gorgeous stain, stainless steel stove. Um, backsplash here automatically. Propane. Um, this is a beautiful, beautiful stove. Definitely, I like it better uh, than what's in um, the Doxy bus. Then another thing I noticed right away that is not in the Doxy bus, they have a little bit of storage because that's kind of been a problem. Like I told them um, that I felt like they needed to market uh, suction cup based shelving because the Airstream has so few places to put anything. So let's take a look here. So we've got some uh, Gigantor closet here. This is for storing what, human heads, mm -hmm. small babies. Yeah. Um, sure. But, um, um, maybe a slightly smaller human head and um, typical Airstream kind of storage stuff. I do like the maple look though. Mm -hmm. It does kind of collide though with the with the walnut. I, yeah. I would order up my Airstream with a different color combination just because we're so hard on it with the pets. Okay and oh similar fake storage just like the Doxy bus. So what do we got going on up here? Okay so like they, they made kind of a bigger pantry sort of type deal instead of the pull-out pantry. And so it seems like Fred and I decided that there's a little switch back here. In fact, Fred, you can you can see it um, with the camera there. And um, this switch turns on the microwave when it's deployed. Not sure why that's a thing, but uh, it is. So and a pull-out pantry. So yeah, that's really nice. One of the big criticisms of the pantry in um, the Doxy bus is it's too narrow, right? So that's nice. They've definitely widened the pantry up. So you can see the theme that's emerging here is um, more space, right? Also, I noticed the floor is kind of a kind of a textured vinyl. So a continuous roll, just like in the International. Um, I do wonder because it's textured and it's so bright what it's like to patch, because we've had quite a few patches done on our floor, and our floor is kind of a very dark, almost a wood um, simulation, so it hides um, patches pretty well. So they have the privacy, um, like blinds right here, which is nice. They have a closet. Um, I can see it has the same fatal flaw as the one that um, came with the International, so Fred and I would immediately go in and mount up a fix for that shelf mm -hmm. design. And so on the ceiling here, they have a similar skylighting, exactly like the Serenity. They have a fantastic fan, um, slightly more modern looking refrigerator. Um, can't see the brand if this is, de uh, oh, it's not Dometic. Hmm. Oh, interesting. Nor cold. It looks very much like Dometic. Maybe Dometic, maybe it's just a sub brand. We'll have to look that up. Um, so then standard controls, although I think they're in a funny place, but so they went a little bit nautical with, uh, entrance to the bathroom here. So, um, it looks nearly identical to the international. Yep. So they, I noticed they have by default, they have Formica here, um, instead of, uh, the Corian. So. Um, but I was told in mine that you could order it with Corian, so it would be interesting to see when we talk to Ken if that's the case. 
So otherwise that bathroom looks basically exactly like the International. So let's take a look at the shower. So that looks identical, even the same kind of vents. Yep. It looks like they went to um, a plastic door instead of the glass, which was heavy and mm -hmm. causes a lot of trouble with settling. I've had that problem, so that's good. Um, oh, interesting. So they've they've moved some storage up here, and uh, so little hanging shelves. Look at that. That's really nice. They've added shelves. That's another problem that we have in ours. So it allows you to take them out and you can hang clothes right. or not. And then uh, there's a TV in here. So a TV. Of course, this is the two twin edition. Then you noticed that um, there's two speakers back here, two up front, but none in the ceiling. So I'll bet you, I don't know this for sure, but I'll bet you they do that so they get more wattage out of each speaker. So, and then we've got... Um, more of our mirrored solutions. And then you can get in here to get at your electronics, so that's cool. I really like the ambient light here. The non-direct lighting is, is really, really nice. And um, the little central area here. So I like what they've done because um, Tina and I find the pillars to be a huge waste uh, that they've done in uh, the International, so. And then another privacy screen right here. So my question then is if this was the full back here versus the two twins, would it still have the columns in the back? Let's ask Ken. Uh -huh. oh, now go. Okay, so we just talked to Ken Fleisch and he is um, one of the sales uh, people here that's um, selling this trailer. So here are the color combinations. Um, for the wood, you can get elm or walnut. And we've, as we've discussed, um, this is the walnut, which is a little darker. We'll pop into the 23 and show you what the elm looks like. Then clearly they've gone for walnut and cream, so the cream upholstery. Here they have a London gray slate and blue. Interesting that they don't offer it in um, a brown like we did in the International. Okay, so this is the 23 foot um, globe trotter that they've got. Just to give you an example, this is the slate um, color and then they still did the walnut uh, embellishments. So. so this is another globe trotter. We can't find the strike sheet, so we're not sure how long it is, but it looks roughly to me 20 feet. But you can see that this is, um, my suspicion is this is what they refer to as London gray. So you've seen the London gray, the slate, and the cream. I don't know if they have a blue, we'll find out. All right, so. Fred and I are back here in our International Serenity. I realized when we made that film that um, I didn't really explain that the, the name of our trailer here is the Doxy Bus. So I referred to the Doxy Bus multiple times while we were looking at the Globetrotter. So, um, so we're here back in uh, the Doxy Bus and I wanted to close out with a few thoughts about what we saw with the, um, with the Globetrotter. So, um, so it's an interesting, uh, as I noodled around uh, what we saw, I couldn't uh, do anything else than the other uh, inevitable thoughts about, you know, would I buy um, the Globetrotter? So I think that um, as I thought about it, the answer I ended up with in my mind is, um, if I did not own an Airstream and I walked into uh, Airstream of Scottsdale and I saw that Globetrotter, I would order one uh, immediately. There's there's no question. I thought um, that it's an absolutely stunning trailer. It has many elements of the um, International Serenity, but more. It's more modern even. Um, a little bit of that European feel, which is what drew us to um, the International Serenity in the first place. So um, the thoughts that I had about that are, um, I've spent quite a bit of money um, already uh, upgrading this Airstream. So I ordered this Airstream uh, special. So for example, um, special ordered it with the specific color leather um, upholstery that I wanted, um, the specific color counters. So um, were I to buy a Globetrotter, uh, I would do the same thing. I would buy the, uh, the Elm cabinetry. It's a gorgeous color. It's more of a blonde. And um, I'm just not uh, Walnut. Walnut is not um, our style. So 
definitely would go for the more blonde wood. Um, also, uh, I'm going to, I'll include at the end of the video, uh, I will contact the Airstream of Scottsdale folks and ask them this question, but um, it didn't seem when I did a superficial scan of the uh, available treatments for the Glove Trotter on Airstream's website that the upholstery was available in leather. And so um, what I saw in all the examples we looked at yesterday was all synthetic. Um, so um, I'll have to uh, clarify. I would absolutely um, want to do my trailer again in the more blonde woods and the darker upholsteries just because we have pets and we're active. And um, as we showed you, you can see the um, the cream color uh, in that uh, globe trotter was already just with a few days being on the showroom floor, beginning to show fingerprints and uh, dirt. So um, another interesting thing about uh, this trailer you know, you could see up here that um, we have the older style kind of um, sliding cabinets. What I really like about these cabinets is uh, we often will leave them with this mode where you can see through. And the Globe Trotter instead had um, these fold up cabinets. And um, I almost found myself thinking last night what would have been fantastic is I think they clearly. They clearly designed those cabinets to fold out of the way so that you didn't have this problem where the cabinets fight, right? And so um, I thought it would even be pretty badass if they created those folding um, cabinets with this sort of a clear plexi with um, you know somewhat of that elm or a walnut finish around the edge. Uh, so I also am a little suspicious just because that's my nature, but. Um, a little suspicious of those highly complicated sort of extended uh, hinge arrangements. I'm just uh, not sure how those would fare over time. Uh, we have found uh, even just in our normal cabinetry, uh, we're catching stuff on those hinges all the time. So I'm not sure how that would play out um, for uh, for those cabinets. But um, so a couple other things uh, about owning an Airstream. You know, we have definitely learned that, um, you know, the uh, less time you have to spend doing something when you're living, um, f you know, essentially full-time or nearly full-time in the Airstream, those tiny little bits of time add up. And so um, the less time you're fussing with the awning, the less time that you're uh, fussing with uh, the stabilizers, the better. Were I to walk up and uh, look at the Serenity and look at the Globe Trotter, I would um, certainly probably go for the for the Globe Trotter. I have found that uh, the cabinets or the sliding uh, plexi cabinets fall out directly proportional to my driving style. <laughs> and so um, on really bumpy roads, uh, for example, heading up to um, like Los Burros Campground, one of my favorite places in the White Mountains, I have knocked those things out uh, fairly repeatedly. And um, I have to admit there's a little bit of a full disclosure here. Uh, there's a quite an argument in the community about what to keep your tire pressure at. Um, the tires are rated for 80 PSI. They are LT uh, pickup truck tires that are on this particular Airstream. Um, I have seen some people recommend you run them as low as 60. Uh, and then you get a much more compliance and bounce out of them. I keep mine at 70. And so ever since I started doing that, I have never knocked these out again. Um, instead of keeping them at that rock hard kind of an 80 PSI. Um, but, you know, alternatively, you would have to wonder, um, do those cabinets open by themselves in the Globe Trotter, right? Like, because they kind of, mm -hmm. could they get knocked and fold out? I don't know. That uh, that would be an interesting, uh, interesting question. Yeah. yeah.